the Silicon Valley real estate market just keeps cruising along. This is Danny Gould with the Selling Silicon Valley Group. Welcome everyone to another Silicon Valley market snapshot for the third week here in July of 2020. Last week, I was off. Why? It was my birthday. I know, I know. So I had to, uh, had to just kick back. You know, SIP is kind of weird because we don't really have the ability to go on vacation. So I had a staycation, if you will. Anyways, so, um, anyways, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, don't, don't even worry. If you want to know how old I am, I, uh, I turned 29 years old uh, on, on the 14th. And I, I don't know. It's interesting because the, the comment I keep getting is that I don't look a day over 18, which I, I guess will serve me well later on in life. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but if you're curious as to how old I am, 29. And I started selling real estate the day I got out of college. So, wow. Feels like forever. It really does. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let's get into the data. But before we do that, if you are a home buyer in today's market and you are looking for the most relevant data in the neighborhood that you are searching in, go ahead and text the word data plus your zip code or neighborhood or whatever place you're looking into the number down below. And we will get you a comprehensive data analysis for your particular neighborhood that you're looking in. And if you're a home seller or thinking about selling your home, uh, now is the time. Go ahead and text the word data plus your property address and we will go ahead and get you a unique uh, comprehensive data set, much, much more robust than you're gonna see right here for your particular property. Let's get into the data, everyone. And uh, what we're gonna see right now is, uh, you know, a few weeks ago in the, in, the, in, the, in the first week of July, we didn't really have a lot of data to go by. Now we have a lot more data, data here to get like month to date numbers and compare them to last year. Uh, good news for uh, the majority of the Bay Area uh, here and, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of delve into why some of the areas are maybe underperforming and, uh, and we'll, we'll just get into it. So here we have uh, Santa Clara County numbers, the uh, percent decrease in pending sales. We have 1521 uh, homes for sale inventory right now as opposed to 2058 the same time uh, last year, uh, which is, a, which is a basically a 25% drop. 26.1% uh, drop to be exact. And 905 pendings versus 775 uh, pendings uh, last year, which is increase of 16.8%. So what does that mean? Supply is down, in, uh, uh, demand is up. That is great news for all home sellers here in Santa Clara County. These are for all residential units. Let's go up north to San Mateo County. We're at 24% increase in inventory, 764 versus 614 and an increase, uh, slight increase in pending sales as well. So demand is increasing, right? There is more demand both in San Mateo County and Santa Clara County. The difference is that in Santa Clara County, we are seeing a drop in inventory and in San Mateo County, we're seeing an increase in inventory. Why could this be? I, I think there's a, a, a lot of reasons why this could be, but when you look at the amount of equity that a lot of home sellers have or a lot of homeowners have in San Mateo County, and you look at the lack of space, you know, San Mateo County, uh, there are not too many areas, uh, you know, aside from like Burlingame and, and some, some of the, the, the more posh neighborhoods, right? But if you, you know, go to Redwood City, I mean, you could, you could literally chuck a rock, you know, <laughs> you could you'd chuck a rock from your property line and, and, and land two properties over, right? There's, there's no space. Uh, and so uh, the, the reality is, is that I think a lot of people right now value their space, right? And we're seeing that, uh, we're seeing that kind of come to fruition in a lot of the, the news articles that we're seeing right now where uh, they're talking about, you know, secondary markets really getting hit hard in a good way by, uh, you know, additional demand. And, and so we are seeing kind of this, uh, 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 this supposed exodus, right, that we talked about last week. Now, how long will that uh, continue? How long will that trend continue? The, the, you know, the, the, no one really knows, right? No one really knows how long that's going to continue. But this, this data is certainly showing us that uh, in San Mateo County, 
uh, month to date. Now, last month, remember, we had a, a decrease, overall decrease in inventory. So uh, this month, we're seeing a surge in inventory. I think a lot of home sellers are seeing what's going on right now at the market. They want to take advantage. And because of that, uh, you know, truthfully, uh, we're probably going to be in a position uh, where home prices start to, um, to reflect that, uh, meaning that there will be pressure on prices, not not upward pressure. Uh, this will lead to more stability in the marketplace if this trend continues. But again, it's a little too soon. We're only three weeks into July. A lot can change in the last week. Uh, but what we do know is that right now, the numbers are looking uh, better for buyers than they did last month. So if you're a home buyer right now in San Mateo, there is a, a, a good possibility that you're up against, well, there's definitely a possibility that you're up against more buyers than you would have at this time last year, but you have a little bit more to choose from. And so that could put some pressure, especially on the less favorable homes, right? The, we've already talked about it. In Silicon Valley, the, the, the best houses on the best streets with the best upgrades are gonna continue to uh, go for the highest possible price and break records and, and have multiple, multiple offers. It's those mid-tier properties and lower tier properties, the ones that need a lot of work uh, and really the, the mid-tier ones, the ones that need kind of a little bit of work and the seller thinks that they still have the gold golden doorknobs when in reality, they're just brass, right? So anyways, let's go to San Benito County. San Benito County has been very fascinating for us. Remember last year, we uh, last month we had this ridiculous surge in in um, in pending sales, 77% year over year surge in, in pending sales and a 38.2% decrease in inventory. We're seeing that same decrease in inventory, so we're still seeing that inventory sh shortage. The buyer demand is still way up, uh, but not nearly as, as uh, lucrative as it was in, um, in, ju in June, right? Still though, this plays into the notion that we're seeing a, a uh, more and more people kind of migrate into these secondary markets where they get more bang for their buck, right? And not just a little more bit, uh, you know, bit more bang for your buck. We're talking people that could sell their home in San Mateo County, right? For uh, a cool two to two and a half million, uh, walk away with over $2 million uh, in their pocket, and they could go buy six homes in San Benito County right? Like four to six homes or like three nice ones or like two really, really nice ones, right? So there's definitely a discrepancy there. And I think we're seeing it play out, especially uh, for, uh, for individuals that no longer need to stay on the peninsula. And by the way, that's just one area, right? There's, there's so many other areas that they could be moving to. We last couple weeks ago, we talked about Napa, out of state, we're seeing people move to Texas, right? We're seeing people move to Oregon. We're seeing people move to anywhere but California, basically, right? So, uh, taxes. Anyways, the the last one, Alameda County, negative 23% drop in inventory. Very similar to what we're seeing in Santa Clara County. Uh, and a 20% increase in demand in pending sales. Very good news for home sellers in Alameda County, Santa Clara County. The two really, uh, you know, core markets, San, San Mateo County obviously is, is, is the mother of them all. However, um, right now, it really is the, you know, playing into this whole notion of the trickle down theory where eventually what, what happens, the mid peninsula starts the trend, right? So we could see the inventory go up in all of these different counties uh, year over year. Right now, we're still seeing inventory levels suppressed. When does that inventory bubble pop? Well, I'll tell you this, it's not gonna pop before the election. We're too close. And truthfully, everyone's at home right now. And when you think about it, a lot of the people that are, are, are thinking about moving, the second school starts, I mean, did you see what's happening with schools right now? Schools are gonna be at home for like the next forever, maybe. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, when you factor in the additional um, time input and stress, uh, people that would have perhaps sold, right, and moved into a bigger home, that market's going to be eliminated, I, I suspect, for the duration of, um, for the, duration of, of the uh, first part of the school year or as long as the kids are in school. Right now, people are off, so they, they have the ability to think, right? So... We're seeing this. Uh, we're, we're seeing that play out, where we're uh, a little bit more inventory is coming on, especially in San Mateo County. 
let's see how all of this plays out, right? Uh, but I tell you one thing, inventory is not going up anytime soon. Uh, now, shelter in place, uh, shelter in place 2.0 gets, uh, gets enacted. We, we hunker back down, people uh, lose their marbles all over again. Uh, we could see some panic selling, but mm, truthfully, there's too little inventory right now for that to, if people, people put their home on the market, they're still gonna get an amazing price. So I don't see this narrative changing anytime soon. Post-election, right? Let's talk post-election because I, I, I wanna project out into the future and then we're gonna wrap up. The, the, the notion that we're going to, uh, the notion that anything's gonna change before, uh, before election time is ludicrous. The, the notion that everything's gonna change after election time is probably very accurate. Uh, what does that mean? Change for the better, change for the worse? Who knows, right? And, and I think, A, that's very subjective. And, uh, and you know, we all know that uh, C California has liber liberal tendencies. So should uh, the conservative uh, nominee win? Uh, that's gonna throw everyone into a panic, right? Uh, so I, I fully expect that to, to impact us in some way, shape, or form. How will that impact us? God only knows how, but I do, I do expect that, uh, now, if, if the liberal candidate wins, perfect. You know, they, they, uh, uh, in, in terms of, you know, people thinking that they're, that they're gonna be okay, that there might be some, uh, that there might be more people actually, um, I, I suspect that there would be more inventory uh, if the conservative candidate wins, uh, be more people uh, looking to, um, to make a change, uh, maybe even moving out of the country. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I, I, uh, I, I've, I've heard it all at this point. And so things to keep in mind. Um, now, would I, would I put it all on black and, and, and say that that's definitely going to happen? Absolutely not. There are too many unknowns. There are too many variables for us to really know uh, without a shadow of a doubt what's going to happen. But keep that on your radar. For the time being, though, if you're a home seller in this environment, my goodness, what are you doing? I mean, the, the data doesn't lie. The numbers, doesn't, the numbers don't lie. We're in a, you're in, in perhaps the most unique situation to, uh, to profit and truly get the highest possible price for your home. Home buyers, you're now in a position where you can actually qualify and, and get something uh, that is, uh, th where your monthly payments are gonna be significantly lower than they would have been had you purchased a year ago. So. On both sides of the coins, I see positives, right? Uh, and, and, I, and truthfully, I don't see a lot of negatives, really, uh, on either side. Uh, you know, the, just the other day, I, I read this amazing article by, uh, by my, my, my good friend, Tom Tognoli. And uh, Tom, is, Tom has been in real estate here, you know, one of the founding, uh, founding fathers of Intero Real Estate, Tom Tognoli is. And he, he wrote this article. I, I highly encourage all of you to read it. Read it. it the, the, the title of the article is Why I'm Still a Big Believer in Silicon Valley Real Estate. You just Google that, Why I'm Still a Big Believer in Silicon Valley Real Estate, Tom Tognoli, T-O-G-N-O-L-I. You'll, you'll read this article and, and you know, it's, it's very heartfelt, it's very Tom. Uh, but you know, he, he just goes on to say that no one knows uh, for sure what things will look like in 12 to 18 months. The further out you go though, the clearer the picture get, um, uh, gets. I'm a long-term bull in real estate in Silicon Valley in the Bay Area. There is no place else like it on earth and there is a limited supply of real estate and that is not going to change. Guys, the bottom line is this, is that never have I ever heard of someone who made a purchase five years ago that is now looking back and saying, man, I regret making that decision. Um, the only people who regret their decision are the ones who don't take action, right? So things to keep in mind. Uh, this is Danny Gould, everyone, with the Selling Silicon Valley Group. Again, if you're a home buyer in today's environment and you want a unique analysis on your particular situation, go ahead and text analysis to the number down below. And uh, one, uh, myself or one of my team members will reach out to you and, and go over your situation. Perhaps it's not the right time to buy for you. I've definitely told some people in the last uh, in the last six months that now is not the best time for them, and uh, and and who knows that that might be you or it might not be you. But it takes that that you know first co uh, conversation to really you know understand what your what your true uh, what your true needs are, right? And then if you're a home seller in today's environment, 
and you'd like to figure out whether or not it's advantageous, what pricing strategies to deploy, every single area is different. Don't, don't get me wrong, there are still areas where uh, things are a little bit slower, believe it or not, especially in San Jose, you're, these are weird little pockets where just like things are dead right now, and then other pockets where it's, it's even more lucrative uh, than, than it is, uh, than, than the data even, um, even shows. So go ahead and text the word uh, analysis, seller analysis, to the number down below, and, uh, and I will reach out to you personally and talk about your situation. This is Danny Gould, everyone, with the Selling Silicon Valley Group. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch all of you in the next video.